Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. This is 2E0 IQJ. So I wanted to go out and do some filming today. I wanted to see if I can get the uh, Slide Wonder DX working on the copper rod. See if the old QRM comes down. Maybe make some contacts, put a bit more power through the radio, 50 watts. Uh, use a different radio, some 857. And see if I make any contacts. But outside, it is pouring the rain. It's very, very windy. And I didn't fancy going out in the rain, setting everything up. Uh, get anything damaged, it was too windy, didn't want to damage any of the antenna. So this week's video we're going to look at ham radio on Linux, it's a while since I've, I've done these and I'm going to show you how to control your radio, so I'm going to use an 857 show you how to control the radio via the computer using a program called FL Rig. So let's get right to it. Okay so we're on the Linux machine and we're going to install a program called FL Rig. So we go into your software manager and type in FL Rig. So FL Rig which is part of FL Digi. And there we go, that's the one I've installed, FL Rig, Ham Radio Transceiver Control Program. Now I can launch it. But first of all, I want to make sure that the cable is recognized in my Linux terminal. Right click, open in terminal, shift control, plus, 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 make it a bit bigger, then LS USB. Now you will need the data cable for your radio, so if you programmed it on Chirp or programmed a radio using the software, then you should be good to go. You see there, Prolific Technology Incorporated PL233 serial port. So it's picked up my uh, cable. The good thing about Linux, it doesn't care what sort of cable it is, uh, if it's, whether it's a fake cable or legitimate cable, it just works out of the box. Now I've had it before where I've tried to program a radio on Windows, which was that RB618 radio. I had to program it before it was supported on Chirp. And I tried about 15 different drivers just to get the cable to work. And eventually I got it, got it to work. It's a pain in the backside. But with Linux, you just plug it in and away you go. It's now supported on Chirp, so all I can do, all I do now is plug it in, turn it on, and away I go. So if we run the FL Rig software, and we're going to click on Config, and go Setup, and we go Transceiver. And you see here, it's got Rig, Update, and Board. Okay, so we're going to leave the Rig as 857. Now it will support other radios, 897, 891, 847, FT100D, and so on. Let's go down. Supports the uh, DX5000, 9000, ICOM 703. Oh, it does 718. I have to try that with mine. Get the cable from my 718. It do the 756. That should be good for you, Cube. 756 Pro, Pro 2, Pro 3, 7000, 7100. Let's go down again. The Elecraft, K2, K3. Oh, does a PCR 1000. I'll play with that. So I can get my ICOM PCR 1000 working in Linux. That'd be interesting. Go down again. Does the Kenwoods. Never heard of Array 152. Anybody using Array 152 radio? Post it in the comments below. Or even know what, what it is. Is it a transceiver, a receiver, or so on? It's the Kenwoods. But we'll leave it on Yesu 857. 857D. Now it says update none. Press the down arrow. We're going to do dev serial port by ID, which is that one there. And we leave the board rate. We need to set it the same as it is in the radio. So on the radio, press and hold the function button. It says cat rate. 4,800 BPS. So the board right here is 300. Let's look at 4,800. So click it there. If it's higher in your radio, such as 9,000, 9, uh, higher such as uh, 9,600 or 19,200, set the program accordingly. But I'll leave mine at 4,800. All we need to do now is press in it. It's going to initialize the radio. You saw the program change there. Now if we come back out, and go back to the main screen on the radio we should be able to control our radio so let's press the down arrow we can do band so we do top band which is 160 meters press it and there you go it's now changed it but for some reason it puts it automatically in digital mode maybe it has to do that for the cable so we press the down arrow and change that to usb there we go and if i go on to here i can type in a frequency so click there now, if you ever get a brand new ham radio, the first thing you do is you listen to Tony Blackburn on it. So 1548, and we're going to press enter. You see there, it's changed. It says 1548, and on the screen it's got USB. Let's change that to AM there. There we go. Let's turn the volume up, see if it's actually a radio station. There you go. Hopefully everyone get a content match for that. And they say I'll listen to 1548. Now, here I can select different bands like I did before, select 160 meters. Let's do 14. That's uh, 20 meters. That's at the moment it says 14.070. Let's do 14. 
230. 14, 230. Present it, you see my display now says 14, 230. You can change that to USB. You see there it's gone 232. We can go down again, so let's go down. I can do it with the mouse wheel. So let's do 230. Okay, it's, it's now changed it. You see here, I've got S9 almost of noise. Now, if I press on the radio, AGC, and turn the auto gain control off, you'll see there my noise floor has completely disappeared. The stations aren't actually, actually readable. And you can do VFOA and VFOB. If you click on VFOB, you see there it says 145425. Put your auto gain control up. It doesn't really matter on the two meters and stuff. That works fine. And you can change the frequency here. So we can do... Um, 433 400 press enter you see there it's now changed to 433 400 again I can change different modes there packet digital and so on now, if you don't like the default colors or the default font if you press on config UI and go to user interface there we go you can change things here so there's my S meter it's in green if I click on S meter let's change that to blue and we're gonna press OK now if I go down to 20 meters, for example, you'll see here my S meter is still green. If I click on OK, the S meter now changes to blue. So if I go back in there, UI, user interface, move that back over here. And you can change the font, the color, and the back. So if, let's go to font. It's reading font, so we want to say we try. Let's go try um, that one there, for example. No, let's do that. Let's do a better one than that one. Let's see if it does that one. Okay. And we're going to press OK. There you are. It's done it. Not very readable on that one. Let's try it again. Let's change to a different one. UI. User interface. And press on font. Let's do that one. OK. And then OK again. Now this program will actually control the radio. So you can have a microphone plugged in to your radio. Uh, like a, a boom mic. And you can actually control it through the actual... Uh, computer program because I've got no ATU connected I'm not going to be able to transmit on the radio and here you can do CTCSS and you've got user A user B now if you don't want any of that just press on the X and you've got your PTT switch there and you can do VFOA VFOB A to B so we want to do that one there for example there you go it's now you can swap it about let's go back again so if we did 145425 press enter it says 145425 Swap it about, goes back to 14. Let's go back to 145.425 and change the mode to FM. Let's swap it about. And there we go, it's now switching between the modes. Anyhow, if you found the video of some use, not to do, give it a thumbs up, comment, like, and subscribe, and the usual stuff. And that was FL Rig using uh, ham radio uh, receipt, transceivers on Linux. And it just seemed to work out of the box for me. There is another program called G Rigs. And it's got a uh, like an analog meter there. So instead of having like the bar graph here, it's got like a, an analog meter like you see on an old scanner or an old fashioned radio with the, with the needle. And now, if you, anyhow, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. This is 2E0 IQJ73 for now.